In this lesson, we will explore a few new masking render elements in V-Ray Next for Rhino. These can be used to quickly and easily create masks based on your scene's materials to speed up your post-production workflow. We'll cover how these elements function, how to set them up in your scenes, and how to tweak them later in Photoshop to further improve your images. To start, let's open up the Asset Editor, and from the Render Elements tab, hold Control and select the Material ID Number and Multimat Materials Render Element to add them both to your project. These render elements can be used to create color masks for compositing based on the different materials in the scene. This way, you can make quick adjustments to the appearance of your shaders in post-production. The Material ID Number Render Element creates a mask based on each shader's Material ID Number value. It then generates a color for each mask using automatic integer color assignment. Meanwhile, the Multimat Render Element will automatically generate a single R, G, and or B channel based on the material ID number for each material. This can then be used directly as a mat and eliminates the need for selecting a color in a compositing software later. To demonstrate how these work, let's go to the Materials tab and then assign some material ID numbers to a few of our shaders. I'll start by searching for the stucco material that is applied to the wall in our scene. Select it, and in the right-hand flyout panel, let's switch the material setting from basic to advanced mode. Now, you can see that a rollout has appeared below called Material ID. Here, we can set a custom ID number for this particular shader, so that shaders sharing this ID number will appear as a mask in the Material ID number render element. It will also act as an identifier for the Multimat render element to generate either an R, G, or B channel for shaders with this ID number. In this case, I'll set the number to 1. Note that the ID color parameter below is unrelated. It is used separately with the Material ID Color Render element, which creates a mask with this color. Now let's follow the same steps for two other materials. For example, let's search for flooring and set the Concrete Flooring's ID number to 2. Then, let's search for the wood material applied to the cupboard and set the material's ID number to 3. The rest of the materials already have ID numbers, which I assigned in advance for this lesson. Now that you've seen how to get set up, Let's go ahead and start a render. All right, once the image clears up a bit, we can switch from the RGB channel to the Material ID Number Render element. Now, you'll see that there are masks created based on the ID numbers we set for the shaders in the scene. And if I switch to the Multimat Render element, you'll see that a mask with red, green, and blue was created based on the material ID numbers as well. You'll also see that V-Ray generated more than one multi-mat material render element. This is because each multi-mat can only hold up to three unique IDs for the red, green, and blue colors. If you have more than three ID numbers, then V-Ray will automatically generate the necessary number of elements based on the number of unique material IDs in the scene, with each channel name indicating the ID numbers it contains. Okay. Now let's see how we can use these render element masks in Photoshop to tweak our image further. All right, here in Photoshop, you can see that I've arranged the same masking render elements as layers on top of the original effects result image. Let's start with the material ID number and make that layer visible. Using select color range, we can pick the red color. Now, if we hide the material ID number layer again, we can add a hue saturation adjustment layer and a mask from the selection will be created. Now, we can easily tweak the hue and saturation of the wall in the background without affecting the rest of the image. Okay, I'm liking how that looks. Next, let's change the color of the draped cloth using one of the multi-mat render elements. I'll make the top layer visible, then switch to the Channels tab and select the green channel. You'll see now that the material ID number for the cloth is highlighted since it was assigned to this channel. Now let's hide this layer again, and using the same technique as before, add a hue and saturation adjustment layer so we can adjust the color of the drape to whatever we'd like. In this case, I'll boost the saturation on the cloth just a bit to make it pop out more. Now, if we do a quick comparison with the original effects result image, you'll see the difference our tweaks made. All right, now you've seen how you can use the new material masking render elements 
to quickly create masks based on the material ID numbers in your scene and fine-tune your images in post-production.